Let me through! Let me through! Flies, man, man, yeah, man, oh man. <laughs> Maybe down low might help. Uh, there. Good morning, everyone. It is the new year, 2024. Uh, and I've got a big beard at the moment. Better fix that because it looks pretty wild at the moment. And it's getting hot, hot. And when it gets hot, when a big beard, your face gets hot, sweaty. Anyway, I thought I would show what it looks like. At the dairy site, bit of an update. Uh, what are we? Early Jan, 2024. We have dug a pit. Rock is going to be a problem. Uh, so this is the pit. Here's the platform where the cattle will be. Uh, that will be like an office. That room, machinery room. Machinery as in plant pumps and bits and pieces. And down there is a big round yard. Cows will walk up along there. Big round yard. So you'll see those piles of dirt. Um, the digger is just over there. Drake the trailer. So we've been, yeah, moving a heap of dirt. When you look, well, when myself and Ben had a look at it, we were like, oh yeah, should like 10 loads of dirt. Well, it's been 21 loads of truck. It's 12 yard or whatever it is. So a few there. And then it's been 26, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 23, oh no, 33 tractor loads to get this area built out enough because we want that built up going down into this center point uh, which since I've recently asked to move um, so you can see how the center of the pit is just off to the side there I want that to make it more of a center point that way it gives us more room for the truck to come around so at the moment it's about there if we bring it in two meters it'll be here just to make it a bit easier for the truck as in the tanker He'll come in and he'll sweep up, park there from the vat room. He'll grab his milk. Away he goes. Around the corner. Um, yeah, so I wanted to move it a couple of metres across too. Because where the cows come in, it was going to be a bit of a bit of a point where they come in like this. Whereas if we move it across, they'll come straight in to the round yard. Centre point. And then they'll go into the dairy. So that, it'll be interesting to see what it looks like when it's done because at the moment it's just dirt. Some foundations for the pit pad. Now this pit pad uh, is going to have bricks on it, which are just over there. So those bricks on it, obviously going to add up a bit of weight and then we're going to have a lot of weight where the cattle are going to stand. It's bits like that, so we need to have it well supported. Then once he's, so it sort of all starts from the bottom and works, works away. Actually, before we do the pit, we're going to have to do a pipe or, a, well, a trench, then lay a pipe in for drainage. So uh, it's all about getting water, obviously works its way down. We want to move it that way. And then we're going to send it across there into a, like a concrete tank. And then we've got to shoot it across the river now because there was no area suitable in this front paddock. It was all rocks. It was all rocks. And so rocks, well, the, the effluent, we'll call it, the poos and wheeze. We'll just run through the into the groundwater and move into our rivers and creeks and bits and pieces, which isn't ideal. So we had to find a site that had a lot of clay in it. It's, uh, what's the word? Mm, 
and permeable. So it won't, won't, it won't go through as easily that effluent and that water. Anyway, we've got a good sunrise happening right at my face, so that's nice. Um, we will go do some other jobs in the meantime. Just thought I should give an update on where we're at with the dairy and what time so we can see it all unfold. Super exciting and just want to get milking. Anyway, we better move some cows. Cows, cows, cows. Let me through! Let me through! So I'm letting these, you know, these kids get behind me. I'm gonna fix a trough down here, it's temporary. And well, we don't have any water on this side with any troughs. Uh, so that is another project that we. Uh, that's a thistle there. So we're just gonna move these cows out of here. I'm gonna try and temporarily fix this trough. Oh. Okay, kids, so you can hear that. So the cows have knocked this when it's probably got down a bit, and the ball cock, instead of going up and down, it's been tilted that way. So the ball wasn't rising enough to shut it off. So it's. it's Hence it's been leaking. So all I needed to do was to turn it more vertically so the ball or the float would turn it off. Anyway, yeah, quick fix. I'll explain um, what I've done over there. They know, they know the system. Come on girls, come on. Come on. So like I said, there's no water on that side where there's little dams and creeks and stuff that the cattle can get some water out of, but not in that particular paddock. So I thought if we just put a temporary one in, as in very, very temporary, uh, we can have the cattle locked up in that paddock and let them really graze it down effectively. Uh, but to do that, uh, I've just sort of scrounged up some things, uh, some fittings, and a bit of pipe. And we've just, um, through that trough there, we've taken the ball cock system out there. The ball's just hanging, well, the float is just hanging there. And we've just gone straight into that and ran it through over to that. I th yeah, where'd I see that? I saw it at one of the dairy farms one time. Thought, that is clever. That will get me by. It seems like a lot of effort for just like putting them in there for, I think they're only in there for two days. But water is critical. Critical. What did I read? I read somewhere, I might have been more than milk podcast. She put up a picture to say, uh, did you know the dairy cows can drink up to 200 litres of water a day? Um, I don't know if that's because it gets hot in some places in Australia, but in Tassie it might not might not be quite that much. But um, yeah, uh, what is milk? Milk is like 87% water, so it's a lot of water. Uh, most cows don't produce 200 litres of milk a day. And, uh, around Tassie, we're probably producing like 25 on average. Some cows will do 40, 50, 60 litres, but um, little Jersey's probably 20, 30. So probably a good average, 25. Um, yeah, but they need a lot of, lot of water. 200 litres, probably at the upper echelon, but um, you've got 100 cows drinking 200 litres a day. I want to say 2,000 litres. But that doesn't sound right. That's 20,000. 20,000 litres. That's a hell of a lot of water. It's 
really is a video about updates. Uh, so a while ago we took took the bulls out. Uh, we wanted to take them out so that we're calving for eight weeks. Um, hopefully that's long enough that we've got as many heifers in calf that we needed to. So they're wrapped and here are the calves. Um, so I'm pretty happy with how they're going. There's the odd little small, like number six there. She's a little small. Um, the little Murray Gray. So he's a bit of an anomaly. He's a steer. In an ideal world, we'd probably still be fairly feeding these guys pellets, but they've sort of got enough green pick around them. That should be, should be okay. Keep it up, ladies. Keep growing. Keep growing. There's a really nice pick in here. So it's it's a little long, it's up around the top of my boot. Uh, ryegrass, uh, Impact 2, which is a perennial, late flowering. That is a dried off clover seed head. So it should have little seeds in there. They'll be yellow. Um, that's clover. Flowering away. And obviously these are clover leaves. Bon appétit! Morning ladies! So, better explain what this is. This is pasture two. Uh, it's a leafy turnip. Hence leaves. Um, doesn't usually grow too big a bulb, but I've noticed that uh, they do have some bulbs in there. Uh, and once they're pulled out like this, they won't really come back. The idea with pasture is that they just graze the top and then and then grow back, um, provided enough water, warmth is around. Uh, when it gets cold, this stuff will bolt a bit, and, but we are in the middle of summer, so I won't do that. So with this stuff, we do have to be a little bit careful. Uh, there's some sort of metabolic things that can go wrong with these cows if they have too much. That's hence why we just give them a little strip. We give them about five paces. Um, yeah, so they can really gorge themselves on that. It's just like having a heap of sweets um, with, there's just no, there's not a lot of fiber in it, uh, not compared to 
grass or particularly hay straw where it's got just it's just about all fiber so this stuff doesn't have that so they'll just eat 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 and not feel full and you sort of get this um well it just keeps on getting worse doesn't it uh thing about this time of year is there's a lot of flies so you see the cows shaking their tails around a lot uh they're uh, trying to get flies off well i reckon i'm certainly doing it all right we'll shift this fence and um give them the next little strip I probably should run through a few little details about this pasture crop. A few people won't be interested. Um, so it's a brassica. So, whew, these flies, man, man, hey man, oh man. Maybe down low might help. Uh, there are rapes, there are turnips, uh, there's kales, the swedes. There's all these different types um, of brassica style uh, forage crops. There's also ones that aren't, like fodder beet, sugar beet. Yeah, there's, there's just, there's heaps of them. Uh, all of their different um, pluses and minuses. Um, the thing with pasture is that it's it's quick. So if, if you sow it into the right conditions, um, you should have a feed off it in six to seven weeks, um, provided you plant in spring, get good rains. This crop we planted, two and a half months ago and it was completely dry 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 really really dry now um yeah we we've had some sort of late rains and they got going and um we've got somewhat of a crop this paddock is completely dry land so we were reliant on rainfall altogether uh, rocky it was bumpy it was horrible uh so it was a good good choice for trying to put something new down and brassicas offer a good break in that system for getting out of grass um all these holes and stuff there's obviously been a few insects in here at times uh diamond back moth is usually our biggest issue around these parts um white cabbage moth also see a little bit of that and it's actually it's not the moth that does the damage it's the grub stage and um so if you see butterflies flying around they're not the issues or moths flying around they're different um they're not the issue it's the grubs that are the issue oh there's flies <sighs> yeah see that looks like it's got a big bowl but i wonder if, if that does it yeah see that's that's probably nicer look at that yeah nice it's probably how i more expected it we and we sowed this at about, I'm going to say like four kilos. So they're not high sowing rates either. And relatively cheap. So we look, we're looking at about $10. Uh, so like, yeah, 40 bucks a hectare. So to plant this whole little one hectare field, there's only $40 worth of seed, which is it's pretty cheap. I mean, you couldn't even buy a, a bale of hay for, for that. So we definitely got more than... A bale of hay here. I'm gonna guess and say that we've got uh, four ton. I think I hope that's conservative. I think it's conservative. Um, so so we got four ton product here. Round bar, we've probably got like three hundred kilos of dry matter. So that's point three instead of four. 
Uh, obviously though, this has taken a paddock out of the rotation for grazing. But, pretty happy with it. It is actually the first time I've grown forage, a brassica forage crop. Um, yeah, so it's been a bit interesting. Um, I think next time I'd like to grow uh, just a bulb type turnip. So that way it's only one grazing. There's no potential of any others. And uh, yeah, I reckon that would, that would see, be a good thing. Anyway, if you've got any other questions, just let us know.